All right, so we are about to start game one of the possible five-game set between Eric Hawkins and Michael Majors. For Hawkins, it was his affinity deck that carried him into this top eight. Seven and one with it. We got most of his wins, was able to draw his last three rounds as he was just in first place for the entire tournament. On Michael Majors' side, this was a list that he and Jerry Thompson were both playing this weekend. Uh, he His standard deck, Teamer Emerge, was excellent. Uh, Obzon was so-so for him this weekend. Yeah, and for Hawkins, his standard record actually undefeated uh, 503 record on his side. Uh, if you look at the course of this tournament, Eric's round one pairing was against Jerry Thompson on this exact deck, and he pulled off a W there. Um, so this matchup is winnable. Having three sideboard games is going to hurt Eric here, but he has a shot. Yeah, so you're saying he, he really does need to 2-0 these first two games. Game one is going to be a good fight for Eric. He's on the play. Majors is on a five-card hand on the draw. You'd think that Hawkins is a large favorite on this one. Certainly, and when Affinity keeps their seven-card hand, that's scary. The deck is not the best at mulliganing, but it is able to mulligan, and it looks to mulligan a lot of hands that don't have one of these haymakers. And if you look at Eric's list, he has four copies of Thoughtcast, so he actually has a lot more stuff that's uh, able to go a little bit longer, generate some value, find those haymakers where you might see Galvanic Blast in that role typically. Yeah. And Thoughtcast really helps in this Jund Abzan kind of field. That was exactly, I did, was just noticing that. Um, you, you know, you talked about how, how it sometimes can mulligan. A mulliganing against Abzan is always, it's just one of the worst feelings out of just about any deck. But you're right, the burn isn't going to help him, but these extra cards, that's going to be great. Yeah, we played some playtest games earlier in the weekend, and there was games where Eric just goes thought cast, thought cast, and I was just behind it as the Lingering Souls deck. All right, well, so for Eric Hawkins, Vault Scourge, Mox Opal, Ink Moth Nexus is the start. We go over to Majors, just a shambling vent. What Majors really wants to be opening up on is a turn one discard spell, so he's already behind on that. Of course, mulligan into five, you, you can't have everything. Glimmer Void for Hawkins. He's got a cranial plating. It's his third artifact, so Opal is online. He will equip. This is four damage with lifelink. Major's down to 16. And he's already put five permanents on the table and still has gas left in the tank. This is a really scary position for Majors. I were hoping Majors can put together a response. You see some lands in his hand, both basic swamp. He's got, looks like to be a forest, a marsh flats. Liliana of the Veil may be his only interactive spell. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on him right now to have exactly Abrupt Decay, and it doesn't look like he has it. No, he actually does have a copy, of, though, of Collective Brutality. This is a card we saw some of in Standard. Michael Major is playing it, though, in Modern. What I'm impressed is that uh, this card is we've seen out of the Dredge decks this weekend right. in Modern. But Michael Majors, he's just a fair deck playing the same spell. Yeah, it's a really great haymaker against Burn specifically. We're going to see it kicked here, and I imagine that he's discarding specifically because he knows Eric has four Thought Cast, and Thought Cast would be one of the better cards for Eric to have in hand here. Ah, big play from Michael Major. So he's going to look at his hand and take a card, kills the Vault Scourge. Now, unfortunately, and this is, this is the risk Majors took, he's not going to get the second card. You can't take an equipment with it. So he, that... The last three cards, Arcbond Ravager, Cranial Plating, Etch Champion, they're all gonna stay. A good amount of bad news, considering that Etch Champion is one of Eric's better cards. Notably, the Collected Defiance actually took Eric off of Metalcraft, so he couldn't cast the Champion this turn because the Mox Opal was not yet on. Majors wishes he did. Majors has the Liliana of the Veil at the ready. If Hawkins had tapped out for it, it'd be one of his few chances to get that guy off the board. Yeah, absolutely. So Arcbound Ravager, the play from Eric Hawkins. Now he is back to being metal crafted, so that Opal is online. Just passes the turn. Now there is no equip there. Yeah, so he still has mana up to activate the Ink Moth Nexus. Perhaps he's hedging against that potential Liliana of the Veil. It is in Majors' hand. We go back over to Michael. He's got a Liliana of the Veil. It may just be lands alongside it. So a fetch of Marsh Flats. He's got to decide if he wants to set up green mana. No green spells in his hand just yet. 
but he will. It's Temple Garden. And for Hawkins, with only the three mana sources, I'm curious to see if in the face of Liliana Edict, he just sacrifices the Ravager and moves the counter onto the Ink Moth, or sacrifices the Ink Moth itself. Notably, he's still off of Metalcraft if the Ravager itself dies, though I think that the Ink Moth Nexus is generally going to be worth more from this position. Majors makes the play, Liliana minus one. Now Hawkins will make that decision. Does he want the land or the creature? Yeah, so step one, animate the Ink Moth Nexus. It's going to need to be a creature for what he wants to do no matter what. Either to modular the counter over or to sacrifice the land. And this is kind of a tough decision. I think that making the Ink Moth a little bit larger, keeping that mana source and the creature land is the play here. And it looks like that draw from Hawkins. So his hand right now is a second Mox Opal, a second Cranial Plating, and an Etched Champion. Hawkins will activate the Incomoth Nexus, and he decides to keep his Arcbound Ravager. This would pay off in a big way if he started peeling lands off of the top. Uh, so I think that that's kind of the hedge that he's going for here. Yeah, now he gets a one-shot chance at three mana, right? Right. Now he has Metalcraft going with the Ravager here. Conveniently, the Ravager is a 1-1 one -one against the one loyalty Liliana on this turn as well. And uh, if he has a second Mox Opal in hand, he can sacrifice this Opal here, play the second one, get up to three mana for this turn. Mox Opal will make a mana. It's going to be sacrificed to the Ravager. It becomes a 2-2. Two -two. Second Mox Opal. And now here we have the etched champion. Arcbound Ravager will attack down the Liliana. So Michael's only got lands. He's going to have to peel a way to kill this, art, this etched champion. He currently has protection from all colors. And it's going to be hard. With the texture of that game, if Hawkins had something like a Springleaf Drum in hand, you might see him elect to just leave the Liliana on the table because the plus one has the potential to hurt Majors more than it does to hurt Hawkins. Though he still has pretty good cards. I know he has Cranial Plating still in hand. He doesn't really want to be discarding here. All right, and here's a great draw for Majors. He's going to have Lingering Souls. Two 1-1s one in play. He's got it in the graveyard and more coming up. Lingering Souls is normally superb in this matchup, though the Etch Champion and Cranial Plating are already on the table. So Majors yeah. is still in a lot of trouble here. And he's on 13 to Hawkins 22. Yeah, that 1-2 punch of Plating plus Champion is really just one of Hawkins' best weapons in the matchup. Uh, Majors did have one of his few ways to answer it, the Liliana of the Veil. But the way Hawkins played that turn, the opportunity was never there. Right. So the Liliana answering Etch Champion, it really only works as support to a hand that's chock full of removal spells otherwise, or against threat light draws from Hawkins. So land from Hawkins, an equip of Cranial Plating, a swing of Etched Champion. He plays another Arcbound Ravager, and he has Majors down to five. Majors picked up a Siege Rhino, and that's going to be not nearly enough in the face of Edge Champion double cranial plating, the last card in Hawkins' hand. This is a great draw for Majors, especially on a Mulda 5. Collective Brutality, Liliana, Souls, Sea Drino. These are the cards he wants. Uh, he'd really love to have two more of them, though. He's running out of ways to interact. Yep, and in these pre-sideboarded games, even with some extra cards, let's imagine that he had a Tarmogoyf and a Grim Flayer. This game doesn't really look different. Those cards wouldn't be adding anything to Major's table. Now, if the extra card's an Abrupt Decay, now we're kind of talking. An attack of one puts Hawkins to 21. Souls will be flashed back. Two more 1-1s one from Michael Majors, but they're white creatures. They can't block the Esch Champion. Majors looks like he is just dead if that champion turns sideways. And Hawkins, here's a Cranial Blading. He'll just make the champion very big. And game one goes to Eric Hawkins and Affinity. All right, we are halfway through step one. Won our first pre sideboarded game. So that one was some easy mode, though, right? Eric was on the play, Majors was on five cards. Yep. If Majors is going to get a pre sideboarded game, this next one is where it's at. A lot of pressure on Majors here. And I'm kind of curious, I would like to have seen the seven and the six that Majors mulligan. You know, you have to mulligan non-functional mixes of lands and spells, but he also has to be picky about the spells that he keeps. He's looking for Path to Exile, Abrupt Decay, one mana discard spells, which on the draw are even not always going to be great. So there's a lot of hands that are good in a number of matches that Majors is still going to have to mulligan in these pre-sideboarded games. For Michael Majors, the Georgia native, this is his first Invitational Top 8. He has had such an 
impressive, he has an impressive resume on the SCG tour. Now this last year, and this I think may be his most impressive thing to date, he started on the Magic Pro Tour scene with no pro level at all, went from nothing to platinum all in one year. This is, this is a player on the rise to say the least. It started just about a year ago with his Grand Prix win with Blue Red Tutelage. Extremely consistent, extremely sharp won that Grand Prix with a nigh unplayable deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where people picked it up the next week and everyone said, I don't, I don't get it. And then <laughs> by I played the deck on Magic <laughs> Online and it took about three days for everybody to just be beating me handily. Players can get ready for game two. Now remember, because this is a best of five series, they are not allowed to sideboard just yet. As they get ready, though, for game two, we're going to talk about Star City Games Regionals. This is coming up on October 15th all around the country. So you see this playmat here. This is the Wings of Glass exclusive playmat, and it's going to be given away at our regional championships in season three, along with tokens. Now, these are available. You see the Robin Alfard token also with the same art. These are given away to the first 200 players to register at each location. So you're going to want to go ahead and make sure to register for that. These will be a standard format, and we can now actually announce where the locations are. So 15 different regionals along around the country. You see them there on the map, and you see the names of all the places. Find out more, and be sure to register at StarCityGames.com slash regionals. This major is back on the, on the play for the first time here, and he's keeping on seven. As we said before, etched champion, that gets in the way of Michael Majors' attrition game plan. Yeah, so in the post-sideboarded games, Majors has the big trump. Two copies of Sony Silence, pre-sideboard, and even continuing in those sideboard games, etched champion, extremely important and extremely powerful for Hawkins. Well, he's going to start the game on a Lava Axe. He's going to fetch for a Shock and cast Thoughtseize. He's at 15, but now he sees what he's up against. And this hand, this hand looks to be beatable. For Eric Hawkins, it's two lands, two Springleaf drums, Arcbound Ravager, Vault Scourge, and Mox Opal. This is great for Majors. Yeah, he's taking the only really problematic card. Hawkins is left with a Creature Land and a Vault Scourge after this Ravager bites it. Uh, for this keep for Eric, the way you kind of justify this hand, what Majors is crutching on, you know, he knows the matchup, is these one mana discard spells. That's about the most important card for Majors. And if you're mulliganing with a hand like this, you're trying to mulligan into two Haymakers, that's pretty unrealistic. So that's why the keep is justifiable, though he's getting punished pretty heavily here. Yeah, Arcbound Ravager gone, so it's, it's just mana and a Vault Scourge for Hawkins. He'll need to draw something. Ink Moth, Blink Moth Nexus for Eric Hawkins. Vault Scourge, he goes to 18. Mox Opal and a pass. And now Majors is going to look to capitalize. It's like Majors has three of a kind path to exile. Hawkins has already naturally drawn his basic island. Yeah, this is great for Majors. Three path to exiles and a lingering souls. He doesn't need more than one threat to win this game. No, Hawkins is going to have to peel exceptionally well from this point to be able to win this one. Spring Leaf Drum from Eric Hawkins. Looks like he picked up a Thought Cast. He was able to chain together some Thought Cast, get some cards, get an Etch Champion with a little bit of backup on the table. He could win this game that way. Another Drum. Here's a Thought Cast. It is just about Etch Champion now, isn't it? If he gets that down, Exactly. It's all about champion or being able to plow through all of the sort uh, the path to exile. So he'll need to just draw a bunch of threats to go with, say, a cranial plating or specifically edge champion. A hit will put majors down. Looks like to 13 here. One off the vault scourge. One off the fetch land. Yeah. I mean, how many? I guess he, he could get enough thought casts to make it through all this removal, but that would be a tall order. Yeah, it's not going to be nearly as easy as game one was. A lot of Aaron Hawkins' deck. He's got four Memnites and four Ornithopters in the main. Majors is down to 13, though. It is significant that the discard spell was Thoughtseize instead of Inquisition of Kozilek. Sure. Majors drawing another Thoughtseize to that point. It looks like his hand, he's got a land, a Thoughtseize, three copies of Path to Exile. Now, I believe that Hawkins has picked up a cranial plating, so this thought sees is mm, huge. This is big. Thought sees cranial plating gone, two lands left. 
It was the downside of that thought cast right there was that whatever Hawkins drew, there was going to be a, a window of a turn where Majors could take the card. Yeah, but you can't just not cast it because then they take your thought cast. So Hawkins is going to play off the top, but he might be able to do it. Here's an arc-bound Ravager. He'll play that. Majors, though, deftly has left up a white mana here on the Temple Garden. He will have one path to exile ready this turn. And a full attack from Hawkins is two. Majors will drop down to nine. Majors being very conservative with these path to exiles. Of course, the current target's not very powerful. The one reason to be able to do that, he knows there's no Galvanic Blast. Yeah, I love this for Majors, though. Takes the damage. Now on end step, he's going to path that Arcbound Ravager. Another thing about it, if he takes the damage here, he's really feigning that he only has the one removal spell. If he's not trying to be too aggressive with them. You know, he knows that Hawkins already can't find a land with the path. So Hawkins might go all in the Ravager just off of the information that Majors just took that damage. So Hawkins feeds the Ravager both drums, then sacrifices it to move its counters onto the creature land. So next time it's activated, Blink Moth Nexus is going to be hitting hard. Oh, yeah. Shambling Vent for Majors. He's got a grip of Souls, Path to Exile, Path to Exile, it looks like. Those are really good holdings. Yeah. Uh, Eric's going to have to start drawing his Thought Cast and Etch Champion to be able to draw out of this one. Can Michael Majors go for Lingering Souls here? He'd be tapping out. He's able to block the hit from the Ink Moth Nexus on this turn, and he's going to have to draw some more action to actually close the game to win it anyway. With most of Eric's top decks are actually threats. He's running on eight creature lands, a bunch of creatures on top of that. So Majors isn't going to, it's not reliable to crutch on winning the game with the one Lingering Souls. All right, Lingering Souls is the play for Majors. We go back to Hawkins, he activates the Blink Moth Nexus as a 4 4, and Majors goes straight for the life pad. He's down to five. Yeah, and again, the absence of a Galvanic Blast. He's able to take some of these hits. Ooh, nice draw here for Michael Majors. Liliana of the Veil. Vale. It lines up great with his hand. He can cast that and a Path to Exile on the same turn. Be able to clean up this Vault Scourge here as well. I suppose he also has Flashback on Soul's double Path available. Right. A lot of great options here. This draw has really come together for Majors. And he's going to go for the second. Here's a Flashback of Lingering Souls. Now creatures number three and four for Michael Majors. And given that these 1-1s one -ones trade with most of what Eric has going on, Going for the Liliana is a little aggressive. He would like to be able to cast these Path to Exiles before he's ever put into a position where he would want to plus the Liliana. You see Michael just is going to go sit back on this card advantage. He flashes back the Souls and just no attacks, says go. Hawkins will play out the rest of his hand now. It's another Arcbound Ravager. Blink Moth activates. Major is going to hold on the activation. Now the 4-4 attacks. Arcbound Ravager, good against removal, though. Generally, Ma yeah. yeah. The fact that Majors has so many removal spells is problematic. And I like this block from Majors oh, okay. here. He's kind of goading Hawkins into sacrificing the Arcbound Ravager, though Hawkins has a backup Blink Moth Nexus. He's just going to pump it there. Sure. And now Path to Exile for Majors will go ahead and hit the creature land. And Hawkins will feed it to the Ravager. See if Majors responds. And a path from Majors here, followed by the Liliana, would make sure that he got rid of the Arcbound Ravager and no modular counters were transferred to the other Blink Moth Nexus. Yeah. Majors sees it and he's very cleverly here. He's going to wait until his own turn. Because of the amount of lands he has available, he can, he can just do that main phase. Hawkins is tapped out. Right. And his draw might change exactly what he wants to do. Majors' hand, Liliana, Path to Exile, land number five. And now here comes the removal. It's going to be the, starting on pa that third Path to Exile. This, this is dangerous from Hawkins' point of view. Right. Path on Ravager. Eric can sack the Mox Opal in response if he wants. And the math involved with that is if he starts sacrificing these artifacts, it makes a potential thought cast off the top worse. 
because he reduces his affinity for artifacts, he'll be less likely to be able to cast multiple spells. Also, if he were to run out of artifacts, he has that Glimmer Void that he's pulled back here. Yeah. So Eric could sacrifice, if he sacrifices both the Opal and the Citadel to the Ravager, moves all the counters to the Scourge, then if Michael has a kill spell, which he does, then Eric loses everything. And it's completely unrealistic that Majors is opening up on this path without a backup kill spell here. He'll sac Hawkins will sacrifice the Opal. Maybe he's splitting the difference. And that's it. He'll move the counters to the Vault Scourge. Now, an update from our backup feature match. Right now, Liam Lonergan has Tom Ross on the ropes with both pre-sideboarded games. The Elves player, Liam Lonergan, the unknown, takes them both. Tom Ross is going to have to win all three post-board games if he's going to stay in this Invitational. He gets better post-sideboard. I don't know if he gets that much better. All right, and Majors, uh, back to this match, though. Majors looking like he may clean up and split the pre-board games with Hawkins. Liliana of the Vale took care of Vault Scourge. Now Hawkins playing off the top of the deck, and that land he drew, not going to help him yet. And with that turn that's passed, Majors will be able to plus the Liliana here, and then he... Well, he would have to have a removal spell to still have Etch Champion covered because Eric still has the Blink Moth Nexus, though the Etch Champion, a little bit shy of being metal crafted, actually. Yeah, we can't forget Michael Majors is at five, but he does have Shambling Vent. Right, he can gain some life by rumbling in with the vent. Majors' position is very good here. Yeah, this has been a great game for him. Once he makes it to these game to game three, things are going to go heavily in Michael Majors' favor. This game looks to be a steal. Hawkins is going to block and pump with Ink Moth with Blink Moth Nexus to eat one Spirit Token, and now Majors shows why he didn't attack with Vent. That's a copy of Siege Rhino, draining three, gaining three. Liliana pluses. And that increases Major's clock, but also just that plus three life. That alone kind of puts Eric out of this game. Eric's counting. There's seven damage on Michael's side of the board. Nine if you include the Shambling Vent. And here's Eric's card, Etched Champion. Now, he's not actually metal crafted as he, it stands. He has to activate the Blink Moth Nexus to do it. Major's next turn likely involves just cracking that Liliana to Edict Eric. And then he's definitely not on Metalcraft. Right, so if he wants to use the Nexus to save his as champion, the champion will lose Metalcraft. And then even if he peels Cranial Plating, sure, it gets him back up to Metalcraft, but it's only plus three. He's taking eight damage or seven damage this turn. That's not nothing. <laughs> it's a lot, actually. Draw for Major's. Liliana, she's going to be gone. We'll see which creature she takes with her. Blink Moth will activate, and it'll hit the graveyard. Yeah, the Blink Moth just was absolutely not closing this game with all those lingering souls. The Etch Champion is Eric's prayer here. Now, the Creature Land going to make its first appearance. It's Shambling Vent, 2-3 attacking. So we have three from the Spirits, two from the Vent, and four from the Rhino. Make that nine. Hawkins is down to six, and Michael Majors up to nine. And even with the plating and leaving the champion back on blocks, he's at a two-turn clock to the Spirits alone. Yeah, sometimes Affinity can draw out of these sorts of spots with a lot of thought casts, but Hawkins doesn't have enough artifacts for that. And game two, this one's taken by Michael Majors. He's evened it up. Yeah, and that was exactly the kind of hand that Majors wanted game one. And post sideboard, things are going to look a lot better for him. All right, so now the players get to go break out the sideboards. We'll start with Michael Majors. This is really maybe the scariest part of the match if you're an Eric Hawkins fan. Michael Majors was one of the players this weekend who, while Dredge was a thing, he made sure to leave his affinity hate in the, in the deck box. Two copies of Damnation, two Kitchen Finks, an Engineered Explosives, a Gideon, a Maelstrom Pulse, two Graft Diggers Cages, two Fulminator Mages, two Stony Silences, a Collective Brutality, and a Pithing Needle. Two Damnations or Windmill Slams here, able to clear up multiple creatures at the same time, indiscriminate of whether or not they're etched champions. Uh, that card's great. The Engineered Explosives, really good. You can clean up multiple Cranial Platings and really deal with almost everything that Eric is up to. 
Maelstrom Pulse can do kind of a similar role, so that card is fine. The two Fulminator Mage, Eric has a lot of creature lands, you can use that to kind of choke him on that. Two Stony Lot Silence, this card, if Majors has it on turn two, it wins the majority of the games that comes down that early. Collective Brutality is another removal spell. And the Pithing Needle can shut off, say, all of the Arcbound Ravagers from their max impact, as well as uh, Cranial Plating out of Hawkins. So I, I imagine that one will come in as well. Yeah, so Collective Brutality was a big player in game one. I was a little surprised to see it in Nobs on deck, a deck that's not a graveyard deck, but maybe that incidental value just off Lingering Souls makes it good enough here? There's that value, and there's also just matchups where it's insanely powerful. If you draw this card against Burn, I have a difficult time imagining how you actually lose, as long as the rest of your hand is functional. I guess for two mana, you get a lot of stuff. I know you're discarding <laughs> cards to do it, but in matchups where it only last four turns, a two-mana spell that does all these things, that's really good. And Abzan is a relatively land-heavy deck. Majors has 24 lands. You don't really need more than four. So oftentimes, discarding that fifth land or the fourth on an early turn is completely reasonable. All right, we'll look over at Eric Hawkins' sideboard. Now remember, this is a top eight, so players have access to deck lists. He's going to have to fight back. Two Thoughtseize, two Spellskite, two Whip Flare, two Ancient Grudge, two Girapur Aether Grid. He has that last, last etched champion. That one seems very likely to come in. Uh, a Dismember, a Relic of Progenitus, a Graph Digger's Cage, and a Gut Shot. So the big hit here is that fourth etched champion. It's his most important card in the matchup. He can use the two Thought Seas to try to catch the Stony Silence. I imagine that that one will be coming in. Can also interact with Michael's removal spells. There's an argument for Relic of Progenitus. It interacts with Lingering Souls, can clean up some Tarmogoyfs, and I imagine that that's about it. You can bring in some combination of Aether Grid or Whip Flare. Those are both answers to, answers to Lingering Souls. Those specifically, the R4 Souls. For that reason, I would be biased towards the Aether Grid over the Whip Flare because it can be more proactive when there's no souls involved. Yeah, and Eric was saying he may even board in these thoughts. He is just because there are so many cards in Major's sideboard that are too tough to beat. He, he has to just... You know, maybe Thought sees the Damnation, Thought sees the Stony. And the thing with Affinity, you have to be careful not to overboard. Yeah. You need you to keep Metalcraft online. You still need to have those Haymakers and have them be effective. You can trim on, on Memnite, but you still have Memnite as part of your best draws. So you can't board in like eight cards into given matchups. Well, your deck stops working, right? Exactly. And while Majors is doing exactly that. Right. All right, well, they're going to get ready for game two. We're going to take a second to hop on over to StarCityGames.com. We have our weekly sale running. So if you haven't been following us this summer, we've been having a different item on the store on sale every single week. Now, those sales end Monday morning. So right now, we are just finishing up our sale on non-English singles. Uh, if you're like me and you, you maybe you cube a lot, I, uh, I really like uh, Russian cards, for example. You see there, and Simeon Spirit Guide, they even had me in mind when they made this because I really like that kind of stuff too. I would certainly get one of those. Uh, all those 10% off until Monday. Of course, check back each week for a different item on sale. I like him for Commander more than Cube. It's really awkward if you have a friend that doesn't play much Magic, you invite him to their Cube, and they're like, what do these four cards do? Uh, in my Cube, I have exactly one four. Oh, I have two. I have an Italian Chain Lightning that I want to fix. And I have a Japanese Mold Drifter, because if you don't know what Mold Drifter does, I don't want to cube with you. Game two, taken by Michael Majors, means that Hawkins will be on the play here. There's going to be three sideboarded games, and Hawkins is going to have to win two of them. All right. Well, he has a good start here, as he's just not paying for any of his cards. It is a turn one. Arcbound Ravager, five permanents. It was Inkmoth Nexus, Springleaf Drum, Ornithopter, Mox Opal, Arcbound Ravager. And Michael Majors with a tap land. Well, he's got Stony Silence. It may not matter. Yeah, that shuts off Ravager in a big way. A lot of pressure on Hawkins to have more than this. In the face of Stony Silence, he can attack for one, maybe two. Well, turn two edge champion from Hawkins as he swings for one. Majors, yeah, he's got the Stony in hand. And it might be too late given this draw. Hawkins will be able to sacrifice an artifact or two to the Ravager, move that over the champion, and make that a very fast clock. Well, we will see. Turn two, Stony Silence from Michael Majors. This card, so good against Affinity. Now, I guess fortunately for Hawkins, he's on the play this game. Yeah, Springleaf Drum and Mox Opal are not doing anything with the Silence on the table. Those for sure getting eaten by the Ravager to move over to the Etch Champion. Yeah, there's no sort of uh, abrupt decay effect in Hawkins' 75. The Stony Silence isn't leaving. 
When he's thinking about the Ornithopter, currently the Ornithopter is a big part of maintaining Metalcraft. That's the thing that he has to manage. He has to maintain the fact that the champion has protection from all colors. So this is all still with the Stony Silence on the stack. Majors at a very healthy 19 life. An interesting argument, though, is that the Springleaf Drum and the Mox Opal are difficult to interact with, whereas a lot of things can deal with the Ornithopter on the table. So you might want to hang one or even both of those back just to keep Metalcraft on more reliably. Hawkins, he's going to go sacrifice the Ornithopter to the Ravager, and then he sacrifices the Ravager to put the counters on the Etch Champion. He's made a 4-4 protection from all colors. And he's hoping to ride that to five hits. Here's the first. The card that he's kind of weak to is Liliana of the Veil, but the Ink Moth Nexus has him covered on that. Vault Scourge here from Meyer Hawkins. And he can safely cast the Vault Scourge because on this turn, Majors can't have Liliana plus removal spell. If Michael Majors can take care of that etched champion, he will move up a game. It is most of Hawkins' game plan at this point. See the hand, though. Two Maelstrom Pulse, Abrupt Decay, Fulminator Mage, Tarmogoyf lands. It's rare that you like Affinity's position against a turn two Stoli Sony Silence, yeah. but Eric's looking pretty good here. See what Majors can do. He's going to play Maelstrom Pulse on the Vault Scourge. He's clearing the way for that Liliana that's on top of his deck. How about the one that he hopes is on top? He'll go to 10. <laughs> Fair Hawkins, he, he has no more plays. He's just, there's swing number two. Yeah, he has a thought cast in hand, which the Springleaf Drum and the Mox Opal can't produce mana. He's on Glimmer Voids and his one basic island if he ever wants to cast that. Yeah, but Majors' hand is loaded enough here. You see Abrupt Decay Maelstrom Pulse? He can just take Hawkins off of Metalcraft. Yeah, he can start just destroying those worthless artifacts that are enabling the Metalcraft. Fulminator Mage, the play from Majors. He'll take Hawkins' last land. He's confident enough here. He's going to take Hawkins off mana, and next turn he'll play his fifth land. He'll blow up two things. Majors is just fine. That's wild. Down to six from Etch Champion. Hawkins no plays and go. Majors to five. Hawkins really needed a Darksteel uh, Citadel there. Yeah. It that would have been, been huge, huh? Yeah, it would have been... Uh, it's a zero mana Darksteel card that does like nothing. Darksteel Relic? Yeah, yeah. There we it go. would have been basically a Darksteel <laughs> Relic, but it would have been what he needed. And now he's facing down Pulse, one of your nonsense artifacts, Abrupt Decay, your Etch Champion. Uh, let's go to game four. Uh, keep in mind, there are no Galvanic Blasts in Eric Hawkins' deck, so it's not like he can just top deck a four point burn spell. Right. Michael is at four, and this is where public deck lists are really nice to have and it, Majors will have all the time in the world to close the game from there. Yeah, this is he's going to make it easy after this point. Hawkins was on the play. Talked about how this post-board, this is really tough for him. And he had an excellent hand for fighting Stony Silence, too. It just so happened that Majors had these Maelstrom Pulses, this Abrupt Decay, and Hawkins played it great. He played it in a way where he forced Majors to have these things that could interact with Springleaf from Mox Opal, but Majors just had them. Hawkins, now he hits a land. It's Glimmer Void. Uh, yeah, he'll play it. Sure. If Majors blows up the artifact, then Hawkins loses all his permanence. So be it. Not like he's winning anyway. Majors, will here are the threats then. Scavenging Ooze and Tarmogoyf. No cards left in Michael's hand. Another Glimmer Void from Hawkins. He actually does have another etched champion. You okay. see him play Arcbond Ravager. That, that might be good enough. Majors doesn't have anything left in hand. He's yeah. just got a couple of creatures here, and he's on four. Uh, the Shambling Vent is significant. Majors can start to gain a little bit of life. Right. Now, if also, there weren't for Stony Silence, Hawkins could deny the life gain with Arcbound Ravager. Not to mention that because of Stony Silence, Eric can't peel Mana Source, cast Edge Champion, and then peel Cranial Plating because that's just off. Yeah, I see Majors went to three on end step there, but there, there are creatures in the graveyard. Scavenger's is going to get bigger. We see a 5-6 Tarmogoyf.
He may life gain his way to safety. Here's a swing for seven. Major is going to make go gain a life, make it eight. And with three green sources here, he gains more life just activating the scavenging ooze than he would with the shambling vent. He can also increase his clock more if he wanted to activate that a bunch of times. Majors to four, Hawkins to ten. Lingering souls and flashed back for Michael Majors. That one's also not bad. Eric Hawkins draws Darksteel Citadel, plays Etch Champion. Can't do that one. That's a dark steel relic. Oh, it just turns off the land completely, doesn't it? Yeah, Stony oh, Silence goodness! It just is a preemptive stone rain for every dark steel citadel in Eric's deck. Can't y overstate yeah, how okay. good that, that card is. Oh goodness! So game three, Michael Majors. We knew he was going to be good in the post board games, and he delivered as promised. Eric needed to land five hits with that etched champion. He's only able to get three, and now we're on to the fourth game. And for the first time in the entire tournament, in the match that matters most, Eric Hawkins back is against the wall. We talked about how tough these post-board games are. I I'm looking at the sideboard again, so he had two etched champions there. That's That's got to be as good as he can do, right? That's his best card. His hand was excellent. The problem was that... Not only did he play it great, he set up that 4-4 etched champion before Rest in P or before Stony Silence was on the table. Got ahead of that, forced majors to have specifically Maelstrom Pulse, specifically Abrupt Decay, to deal with his non-creature artifacts, and majors just had it all. Yeah, so so let's go through what Hawkins had on the play there. It was a turn two Ravager or turn one Ravager, a turn two etched champion. Quickly got all the counters onto the to the champion. This is perfect, right? Yeah. But it's not good enough. And what Hawkins is kind of banking on, sometimes your opponents have Stony Silence, but they're playing in a deck where the matchup's a little bit worse. Maybe it's a, not a Lingering Souls deck. Maybe it's not an Abrupt Decay deck, and they have to mulligan into Stony Silence. Sure, yeah. Majors had a seven-card hand with Stony Silence and excellent backup. Yeah, Stony Silence plus a big stack of kill spells. And in this situation, I guess, Hawkins would have to have a lot of Dark Steel Citadels, something maybe... Right, the problem was that Majors actually killed off all of Hawkins' artifacts until the etched champion was no longer metal crafted. Right, despite the fact that the card would not do anything on the battlefield other than enable metacraft, he really wanted a pair of Dark Steel Citadels. Game four coming right up. Take a second. StarCityGames.com, you've seen our fabulous creature collection. These are the most adorable critters on Magic cards. You've seen them on our pins, on our tokens, on our game night promos. Now you can get them on play mats and sleeves. You see, this is, of course, the August game night promo, Young Burromancer. He's available for order on all the products you see here. Now, we also have some exclusive ones available from the store, including the Fruit Bat, this, this delicious little insect eating his way out of a watermelon. You can get this on just about everything in your Magic Collection. Uh, more of these are available, too. Head on over to StarCityGames.com slash Creature Collection. Rodent. Uh, He's a rodent, not an insect, right? He eats he, insects. Right. He's kind of like... Remember there's this, like, Calvin and Hobbes comic where Calvin has to give a report on bats, and his whole thing is titled Bats Are Bugs, and they just, like, <laughs> keeps going for, like... I remember that. He starts the presentation by calling them, them insects, and then everybody yells at him that bats aren't, aren't bugs. It's a bold starting point. Well, we have our third semi-finalist to announce for Tom Ross. A valiant fight, but he it will not be our first three-time Invitational Champion. He falls to Liam Lonergan. The unknown player here from the Northeast on Elves is on to the semifinals and awaits the winner of this match. Tom will have to settle for having just two tokens in his likeness. Though Will, uh, he's already invited to the Players' Championship. He had, yeah. he had most of the stuff that you get for winning this tournament already. So what that means is for Todd Stevens at home, he was the, the championing Tom Ross. Stevens will have to go after one of those Season 3 or those 2016 invites if he wants to make it to the Players' Championship. Really unfortunate string of events for Todd Stevens over the past two weekends. Had some issues with his travel plans. Some tournament games really not go his way. He'll have to try harder in Season 3. So those the four slots this weekend now belong to Kevin Jones, Andrew Jessup, Tom Ross, and the whatever player wins the champ Invitational Crown this afternoon. 
a lot of great players still in contention. You know, I guess not a lot. It's not a very large field. Uh, uh, but about five. All of them are great. <laughs> Jadine Klumperens, Brad Nelson, the two players in front of you, Eric Hawkins and Michael Majors. And obviously I'm looking forward to next weekend. We're going to next round. I mean, next in the semifinals, we'll get to actually see Liam Lonergan here on camera. Um, when you have a player with such a small resume start to go this late into a tournament, something's up. Right. And I'm going to be excited. We're going to be back in the covering the winner of this versus versus Liam in the second semifinal. Hawkins on a mulligan. I believe he's. This is his second mulligan. That's bad pre sideboard. This is really bad post sideboard. When, if I were ever to play Obzon, I have to start out, not that when I play Obzon, but uh, <laughs> in, some got, in some hypothetical universe. world where I'm playing this deck, I just have to feel great every time I see my opponent mulligan because I know that this Thought Seize and this Path to Exile and this Maelstrom Pulse in my hand are going to trade with his first three cards and then, and then I'll be on top. Oh no, not like this, Eric. We'll see if Eric Hawkins can cobble together something. It was already going to be an uphill battle on the deck sheets, and now, with as many mulligans as he's on, the battle's going to get even harder. Still couldn't be happier for Eric. Top eight of his first invitational. Excellent. Add that one onto the resume. But you just hate to see somebody go down like this. Mulliganing to four in a bad matchup. So what can he do? Uh, a fast, maybe a turn two etch champion. He'll be out of cards at that point. But my, he does it, and Michael can't remove it. Maybe there's, Hawkins wins. There's some weird scenarios where maybe Majors didn't look at his seven, and Hawkins can cast a Steel Overseer, and it'll just stick around. Maybe Major, Majors keeps the two lander. Kept the one lander with a couple discard spells, and Hawkins plays all his spells on turn one. Eric had mentioned that, and one of his strategies was he hoped that Majors might draw a borderline hand, the kind that you're supposed to keep but that's missing something, and then Majors swings and misses. Maybe his hand is land, land, Siege Rhino, four Lingering Souls, and he peels Siege Rhino. Uh, he accidentally left in Nile Spellbomb and draws mm -hmm. that. Right, he's hoping, like I said, that Majors would swing at a pitch and miss, but when Eric's pitch is is in the dirt 10 feet in front of the plate. It, it doesn't matter. He's kept a three-card hand. Well, if Major swings at that pitch, that's a strike, right? Yeah. So there yeah, you it's go. Got, I mean, he's got Michael Majors is is too good to do that one, though. Uh, land Vault Scourge for Eric Hawkins. He's going to maybe lose his last card to a Thought Seize. Yeah, OK. All right. It's Eric's empty-handed now. Signal Pest versus Obzon. Eric's next turn, he will be attacking for, well, if he draws a land, he'll attack for two. One thing you can say for Eric Hawkins, he's going down swinging. Even in this position, he's playing on. Here for Aether Grid. There we go. Attacks for zero. I came this far. I'm taking my feature match. And Majors will play Tarmogoyf. A anti-climax here for Eric Hawkins' run, but I want to just go back at how impressive this has been for him. So he won his first seven matches with Affinity. He took his only loss of the tournament to Brad Carpenter in round 12. Mm -hmm. um, that was with Affinity. So he's going to end the tournament at seven and two in matches with the deck. Uh, let's, deck let's talk about his pairings as well. Yeah, okay, so he played against Jerry Thompson, Tom Ross, Brad Nelson twice, Brad Carpenter twice, Seth Manfield, this is just and then he was undefeated through these matches. Right. A great event. And then in standard, a 5-0-3 record. Two of those, of course, being intentional draws, as he was already locked. Right. Uh, with blue-black zombies. This wasn't even on anyone's radar. Really awesome deck. Had some great games on camera. Him against Tom Ross. You'll want to check that one out. I believe it was round eight on day one. Yeah, playing for that 8-0. and oh, A real barn burner where Hawkins took a, a bad matchup. Game and two just, specifically, yeah, just way behind, was able to generate enough value to deal with all of Tom's humans. Now, I'm looking at this board, and it's all, it's just cleanup duty for Michael Majors as he's going to cruise to a semifinal win here. Using Maelstrom Pulse to knock each of Eric Hawkins' threats off the table as he draws them. 
taking all of Eric's lands. And if you just ignore the mulligans, look at the spells that Majors is casting here. It really exemplifies how bad the matchup is for Hawkins. Turn one discard spell followed up by Tarmogoyf. That's a turn two, three, four, or a four, five. Has Maelstrom Pulse on the following turn to deal with any cranial platings. Has Fulminator Mage to deal with any creature lands or to choke Eric on mana. And how about a second Tarmogoyf? Hawkins. Each turn, I just want to point, he has swung with the signal pest fighting to the end. Unfortunately, that card doesn't fight very well, but if <laughs> he's going to make it fight. Well, you know, Major's at 13, so <laughs> he's doing some work. See, Major's draws is one of Pendlehaven, not quite capable of pumping Tarmogoyf, though. Not going to need it. And that will be the hand. So it is Michael Majors with Obzon losing the first game and then three in a row on to the semifinals where Liam Lonergan awaits. That one's going to be a curious matchup. White and black removal spells versus elves. We'll find out how that goes. For Eric Hawkins, still an excellent tournament. For Michael Majors, congratulations. Let's see what else you can do. And for Majors, this is just